Yeah, I got two. Pop it in, pop it in. Pop it in. Where's, where's the other the, one? Where's the other one? It's, a, it's on land. What's up everybody, this is Podventure number two, Boats and Bows, and Mark and I are here to tell you right before we get into the, all this astounding footage that the trip didn't exactly go according to plan. Uh, you will find that the boat didn't make it as far as we originally intended, but shots were fired. Indeed, and we learned a ton from this hunt, and in fact, we learned so much so that we think maybe there may need to be a second trip similar to this in order in the future, but hey, for right now though, you get to enjoy in many of the mistakes, but some of the triumphs made by us when we were out there. And uh, hopefully you too can learn a lot and be empowered to go on your own adventure because ultimately, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. You gotta go. If you don't get your butt off the couch and off the keyboard, you're never gonna learn these things. And you're never gonna experience adventure. If you're interested in watching a train wreck via boat, learning a lot, and hopefully being inspired to plan your adventure and just go, tune in. Do it. All right, roll it. All right, so they say the best day in every boat owner's life or the best two days are the day they buy a boat and the day they sell that very same boat. So at this point in time, we're on one of our best days. And uh, we're gonna unbox here our boat for this adventure up in the north woods of Wisconsin that we got from Little Google Foo and finding boats2go.com. This here is an 18 foot inflatable boat, and Mark's dad sent us a motor. That's pretty sweet. What do you say? Get to cracking. All right. I'm sure it says. I've uh, actually never seen this boat before. Instructions. Don't need those. What's this one? Repair. Oh, repair kit. Oh, that's reassuring. Yeah, I'd hold on to that. Oh wow, she's heavy. This is not going to be an easy portaging boat. Oh, you need it. Okay. Fine. Comes with a duffel bag. <laughs> there we go. My, my foot. <laughs> you don't think she's too big? Oh no, it'll do perfect in a tight stream. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you what's your concern? My concern is... So, thus goes into the part, the second best day of a boat owner's life, selling the boat. Do we need to sell this boat? Immediately. No, this is gonna be fun. Mark, this will go down a ring. When I was watching videos, I saw canoes get stuck. That's my concern. You saw canoes get stuck? That's the video that I sent you. On this river that yes. we're going to? You didn't watch the video. No, I just assumed that you were... On it. Yeah. <laughs> you watch canoes get stuck? It'll be fine. Oh, Hold on, out. Jim's gonna go for it. I just wanted to see how, how careful it is. Here, we'll set it on the keel. So, just let her down easy. Let her down easy. Mark, you find the Watch keel. fingers. Yeah, Mark, you and your marine turn. One, two, what are you, what's, what you doing? Uh, I'm just tipping her up. She can stand like that. Okay, that's normal. So we were lifting it. You yeah. Know, she's got a little heft to her, but... She ain't small. A little pulley, pulley thing. Gentlemen, we have a boat. We have a boat. We got a boat. Ow. Welcome everybody to a lake. More specifically, our testing lake for this 18-foot inflatable boat behind me. We're gonna be testing out the motor that Mark's dad so kindly sent us over from Washington State. We're also gonna be shooting a little music video here, making sure the boat doesn't deflate when we put it in the water, you know, things like that. Generally getting the setup and feel for what it might be like when we're actually on the river floating down for this Boats and Bows hunt. So uh, a nice big open lake we felt was probably the safest bet rather than you know, a big rushing river with big currents and things like that. So, oh, okay. Oh, this hand sucks. There's a hey. There's a there's a handle on the middle there. Oh yeah. Might make Uno, it dos, cuatro. Watch your step. Watch your step. Watch your step. It hurts. Watch your She's step. Slick. Watch your She's step. She's slick. Holy mackerel. Um, man, that's just kind of making up to my own knot. Yeah, that's a good, a lot of people use that. Fisherman's, fisherman's tangles. Yes, oh, definitely, oh. not. It's a good thing one of us owns waders. That's the double loop, double granny There's only one of us. 
Are you supposed to take your sandals off before you put these on? You can leave your pants on, you should be fine. Yeah, I left my sandals on too. Oh. Changed my mind. One of them is. That is slippery. It's like ice. It's a cool and humid 100 degrees. These bad boys. They are. Should have worn my belts. There it is. I wasn't kidding. Yeah, I'm about to do that. Eric, grab onto the back of my wind and see if I eat. There we go. Firmly grab me by my trousers. Oh, Michael, sorry. I got you. You're good. That stuff's pokey. We were at, we, we asked this guy yesterday if we needed anything else, and he's like, oh, make sure you have the shear pin. I, none of us knew what that was. No. Holy smokes. This is going swimmingly. Ourselves motor. Well done, guys. It's on. Good, now that's checked. Yeah, now we just need uh, fuel and things like that. Yep. Okay, and then let her go. Okay. Remember that saying about the best day about a boat is the day you get it, and then the next best day is the day you sell it? Yes. We're in the in-between stages right, right now. Right, this is the worst day. Get mad at it. I wouldn't get Tim, I don't think we're loading her up just yet. Oh. Well, you're trying to start the motor. What happens if you take off and go fishing? Well, come back. Here, I'll stay in here with you. I don't. Okay. Wait, 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 no, wait. Not I that again. Not that. My gun. Get the pier. Eric, how, at what? My God. We were embarking. N n no, we weren't. It looked like we were about to leave. The motor. You're the only one who's working yet. on. <laughs> of course you feel confident. Hey, look hey! at all we needed was a guy with a life jacket. We did it. Look at you. It's actually uh it smoke like that. Oh, smell that two cycle. Coming in hot. There's another one here for you too. That's a clip. Maiden voyage! She runs like a champ, Jim. This is nice. She runs like a beard. I am the captain now. Give her. Woo! So, uh, little did we know, Eric picked this lake as our testing lake because he wants to check out a few pins on his Onyx map for hunting this fall. Yep. So that's cool. Yep. What the was that? Mark, did you the good? fuel just disconnect? What the was that? Something smells. Mark, Mark, I don't think the fuel is connected it's anymore. It's not. Boy, that's interesting, isn't it? Dang, look out. You should have brought a volleyball. Wilson! There too, which is nice. Yeah, surrounded by rocks, but deep right there. Well, welcome to our home for the next four and a half or so days. Uh, just arrived up here, and this landing appears to be mostly for small craft. Canoe access. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to prevent what we're doing. Almost. Almost. Weird. Not completely. Kind of inconsiderate. Uh, Right off the bat, we have a little bit of an obstacle, though, but we still have to kind of, we, we gotta unload, we gotta situate ourselves here first before we do much else. Uh, situate ourselves, figure out the put in and take out vehicles. Um, a lot of screwing around to do before right we're here, actually squirrel. in the water. Oh, oh, he did it. There's a squirrel over there. All right. Nice, feather brand. Okay. Removing. Removing. Keep going. You're good. Keep going. You're good. Keep going. You're good. Here. Sure. Woo! 
Oh. Glad I ate that ice cream. Nate will be up front. Uh, motors for looks. Directing, yeah, motors completely for looks, added weight, <laughs> uh, something to break on yeah. the way down. Oh, hey, Nate. We're getting there. We're getting there. Look at them fancy wares, Jim. I don't know, I just, uh, they're very artsy. Just got art. Son. I know they had the plain ones, but I had to be different. These days, these boots aren't gonna wait all into you. I'm the boat operator. Big jobs today. Is this empty? Yeah, it's empty enough. I mean, no, it's not. It's got bacon, like seven sandwiches, honey, peanut butter, cheese curds. Two, three. Oh. All right. Boats and bows. Boats and bows. All right, theoretically, there should be a space for one person here, a space for one person on the other side. I'll sit back in the middle. We got Nate up front. Nate, uh, what you're looking at here is really just a series of poor decisions. It's 5 p.m. We're several hours behind schedule. The boat weighs 10,000 pounds. Eric and uh, keeps eating we're going to send curds. it. I guess we're going to. Jim's excited. I'm jazzed. Wait, we've been waiting to do this for months. All right, let's just I'm, get it in the water. Hey, should we go around this big rock first? Like around, back and around and then out? Uh, I think our choice or is literally to here. just kind of go downstream. Yep, we okay, have one cool. option. We should probably untie first, We though. should probably also go frontwards first. We'll do a wide turn. What's your status on that branch? Dead or alive? <laughs> be, be honest. Uh... It's a strong medium. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> it's dead. Where do you want the lightest? I mean, I, this isn't like at a this fat point, joke. There's no like bragging rights or fat <laughs> jokes. It's just where I'm probably think, the lightest. I think in the middle. You guys want to point the nose downstream? I mean, it's just isn't that like a thing? I think I think whatever happens is going to happen real naturally. You want to go down the river backwards? Let's flip around. So. I'll be honest, I'm picturing a lot of spinning. Yeah, and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like the teacup ride at carnivals. Exactly. <laughs> right through this, this gap. This gap right here. Yeah. So point, point her a little bit that way. All right, Nate, settle up. And we're off. And we're so, probably gonna go backwards. This is probably not the right time to bring this up, but by any chance, did you relock the car? It's fine. No. It's fine. What's in there? Not much. Nothing's in there. But, those... but it's a car. <laughs> Here we go. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> oh, shit. Big drop, big drop. Shh. Okay, I'll hop out. I'd have left it unlocked. So Dirty Mike and the boys have a soup kitchen. <laughs> So the good news is, van's locked. Bad news is, it's just a bit anticlimactic to set off for the adventure of a lifetime in a boat, head down river a bit, and then be able to walk back to the landing that we, we put in at. So only to confirm your Toyota Sienna is locked. <laughs> There's a Yeti cooler inside. Think of how long it would have taken us Hop in. on foot Let's go. <laughs> to take all this stuff from there to here. It would have taken Jim. just as long, and now we can... Jim. Welcome to our we gotta chariot. Get in the boat. Okay, we're getting in the boat. Oh, head up. Down this side. Okay. Good. You can hear rapids up there. Rapids. Big cut, big boy in there. Super gap, right? Big 
Okay, Mark, I got a good angle out of that to do the pull. There she goes. Listen to that. Okay, Deb, it's getting showered. It's getting showered considerably. Alright, cool. Prop made it. Yeah, we have three miles to go. I feel pretty what good. What time is it? It's, Six, it's uh no, it's five forty five. Three miles, huh? I feel good. My goal? Come out alive. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> with all of our with all of our things. I'm not worried about it. Again, we're good. Think about doing this on foot with all this gear. We I never would have made it this far by now. We never would have brought this much gear. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have a bow. <laughs> and a backpack. <laughs> yeah, but it wouldn't be this fun. True. I think what we should do is like, we should turn this into like a massive giveaway, but it's like a treasure hunt giveaway where we just continually drop gear. Yes. And then people like, we just turn it into a for, for those following in Louisiana, stay tuned because it's all coming your way. Yeah, Boats, crawdad traps, packs, yep. <laughs> bagel sandwiches, all yep. could be yours. Those are that valuable. Speaking of bagel sandwiches, okay, you know what? Jim, look, as we were leaving, the things that were getting left behind were the food and the water. I know. Are we even moving? Look at those trails, Eric. Those, like right there? Yeah. Right there. Are, are those they? beaver trails? Or are they deer trails? At DJ. Mark doesn't own a helmet. Me Eric? Either. Neither does Eric. <laughs> what was that? Wolves? Look at that. Jay. Oh, dude. That That's the camps. launch. That's the launch. Beach Wait. the whale. <laughs> Jim, I sit down and dig in hard. Keep going that way. Thanks, Eric. I'm gonna fish off this. Some mm -hmm. night crawlies. And a couple of panties. Something's super effed right here. It needs clips. It did, not yet. Not yet. This doesn't look right. How did it work perfectly the first time we did it? I think it was just one of those cases of like when you're a kid going to church on Sunday and you try buttoning up your shirt, but you start a button in the wrong buttonhole and then the whole shirt looks screwed up and your mom comes in and you know, pissed off. All hell breaks loose mm -hmm. and you're going to hell. And... Don't worry, Eric, I got it. Just keep holding the thermostat. Okay. Yeah. Hey, keep holding it as far away from us as you can, but by yourself. Hey, I was holding it for Nate. I'm noticing dramatically less mosquitoes. Mostly because my vision isn't impaired any longer by mosquitoes. Yeah. Gosh, look at this. Right right on the three-pronger. This like she's intended yeah. to be. That's what I like. Oh! oh. <laughs> Are you okay? Right, right on the three-pronger. Oh. Did that actually get you? <laughs> it did. <laughs> right on the prong I horn. am sorry. Whoa, Shit. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh man, that's a hazard. Oh, it actually got you. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That's, that's boy. Yeah, that that uh, this one is really not. Well, there we go. Once we get it taut, it won't do that as much. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Man. All right, so we've reached the end of day one, or I guess you can almost even kind of call it day zero because most of today was actually driving, getting a boat in the water, struggling in the water once the boat was in, and then playing around with rapids. We planned to make it about three miles further, but alas, we ran out of light, or figured we were going to run out of light, and decided to camp here, which was probably a good idea. Um, thanks for that, Mark. But anyway, we uh, are going to try building a fire here. We're also going to jet boil some water. Nate brought the Corbell out, and we're going to try and uh, pig out. Do a little carbo load, like Michael Scott would do uh, the day before a big official day one tomorrow.
Well, well there's ducks here. This might have been a little far out. Yeah. <laughs> I Sling. panicked. I didn't think they were going to swing again. <laughs> sling and Rick is in full effect. Yep. <laughs> He's in full sling. Got my contacts in. Now I can see. Let's identify some ducks. You're certain your contacts are in. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't behind us, didn't it? That did go behind us. Well, I got our six. We are, uh... We are on the river, basically at our first camp. It is opening day of duck season. As you may have seen, Rick just had a volley at some woodies that came through. Beautiful morning, fog, cold. When we went to bed, it was like 90 degrees last night. The tent was sweltering. About a half hour later, it cooled off, and then it got cold. It maybe even froze a little bit last night. So we're hoping to scratch down a, uh, a duck or two, if we're lucky here. Um, we'll probably break camp, move down river and uh, do a little more adventuring. But it is beautiful, beautiful out right now. Really cool looking. Quickly seeing that ducks could easily become the primary target yeah. on this trip. I'm glad I brought two the boxes of shells. Yes. Likewise. Dude, a freaking duck would be so tasty for that. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah, now we eat. Oh, nice work. Freaking sweet, dude. That's sweet. Dude, it's freaking <laughs> That is free. This thing is so deflated. Yeah. Got him, Rick. We got breakfast, boys. That's so cool. Thanks, bud. Is he young, Eric? He seems yeah. like he's a young one, or is he just not like full plume yet? Well, I think I think the older they get, the more pronounced yeah. that crown gets. But I could be totally wrong. I think you're right. I think he's a young bird, and you know, then it's early in the year. Keep shooting. Though. I'd say I'd stay put and keep oh, yeah. shooting this All morning. Right. Yeah. Experienced, wise old Mark gets a duck. <laughs> Those Pop-Tarts look pretty good, though, too. <laughs> the first thing I said was, now we don't have to eat Pop-Tarts anymore. <laughs> too late, I already ate both of them. All right, well, the morning flight appears to be over. We did hear a couple volleys of shots, had a couple geese fly pretty far away, but We've got a plan. We think we have a plan. So number one, we're gonna get this duck broke down, eat him for breakfast. Number two, we're gonna pack all our stuff up, probably make our way downstream quite a ways to a slough that er uh, Eric's identified. It looks like some likely looking waterfowl habitat. Number three, we're gonna hunt that and then head further downstream to what should be camp two. And it looks to be potentially a little bit more likely deer habitat. Mm -hmm. But the task at hand right now, let's get this guy cleaned up and uh, make breakfast. I don't know, Eric, I'm just gonna breast him out and take the legs. There's probably some fly tires out there that are definitely screaming right now. It's so interesting how you cut these things open and the meat inside is red. Like you eat domestic chicken and turkey and it's nothing like that. And you wanna cook them pretty rare, right? Yeah, I think that's going to be our best bet for sure. Little, little wood duck drumette right there. So we got the two breast fillets there and got his little drumsticks and should be a nice little 
breakfast treat to start our day. That ought to do. It'll spread around yeah. and get any oils and gonna, stuff. I'm gonna do the other side too. Okay. I'll keep cooking on that oil if we take it off. Man, they smell so they do good. They smell good. Cool. Oh. Well, that little jet oil got this thing nice and hot. Dig in, boys. Dude, good stuff. That's special. You don't like them that rare? I don't think that rare. That's I think a it's rare. a little. All right. Oh my gosh. Good, huh? Mm hmm. Wow. God, that smells so good. Oh my gosh. Dude, they're amazing. That is good. Oh man. All right, Nate, we'll save you this one over here. New, it tastes like a New York. Mm hmm. Oh my god. It's so good. Oh. Wow! That tastes better than steak. Yeah. But on the same, like, flavor palette exactly. as steak. Mm -hmm. To me, it's, like, almost identical to, like, if you just, like, cooked a New York medium. <laughs> yeah. That's really awesome. Good. That melts, too. It, that, like, melts in your mouth. We're living, boys. Yep. But yeah. we avoided some obstacles. Near yeah. certain and calamity. Now we've, now we've avoided the skunk. We overcame. We probably still have some, calam some calamity in our future. But oh yeah. Hopefully not much. Nah, I don't think so. None. Never happened. Over the course of the next couple days, on a river we've never been to, and a boat we've never used. With way too much gear. We'll be fine. Everybody's dead? Yep. Camera Onward. guy. Eight miles to That's go. That's your oar. Shouldn't we need it? We are. Goodbye, Camp One. Bye. You guys ever seen the movie Deliverance? Yes. Have you ever seen the movie without a paddle? That's what we're more like. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. We're back in there. That are looks we, awesome. Are we even in the are we even in the county we can hunt yet? No. <laughs> Eric, you said take it down what side? The left. Okay. How far do we have to go to uh, our what we think will be camp to? Uh, about six miles, seven miles. Okay. How many fathoms are we at, Jim? The hell Point. The hell does that mean? It's like a I cannot, a nautical I, depth thing. I cannot fathom I what a fathom how deep actually is. I believe a fathom is six meters. Six feet or six meters. Somebody check us on that. We really probably should have a shotgun like out. Yeah, I got two. Where's, Where's the, the other one? one? Where's the other one? It's, a, it's on oh, okay. left. <laughs> we got 
dinner tonight, boys. <laughs> Dude, good shooting, oh. Eric. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. All right, cut it quick. I'm just, I just want to wring his neck. Well, we got more fowl for the frying pan. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of meat for tonight. That we do. We've been keeping Eric's shotgun at the ready and it yeah. it paid off. It proved to be a, a good way. idea. Well, we learned the lesson the hard way because we had a couple ducks buzz us without the shotgun at yeah. the ready. Here we are. You can't catch bass like this. So that's what we got. This we're is gonna be tasty. We're gonna have a lot of meat tonight. A lot of meat. A lot of food. All right, let's get him in the boat, which also appears to be taking on more water. Yes, yes there is that. All right, let's go. Time is of the essence. So we jettisoned the Yeti full of ice before we embarked on this journey, thinking there was surely no room for it, which as you can see, a 125 Yeti there is, have, there really is no room would have for trouble. It. There really is no room. Uh, but now, of course, we have these geese, and we're going to have to cook them up tonight because there's no means of storing them for an extended period of time. Um, we're bailing water right now. Yeah, we got water. It's a self baler. Well, you do it yourself. Yeah, DIY baler. It would seem that perhaps one of the rocks we hit maybe has begun to allow oh, water. Speaking of rocks, through the floor. That looks rockish. And uh, we're taking on a bit of water. Three miles beyond. The boat oh, it's three miles. It's it's a ways. For those just tuning in at this point, what you missed was we had to utilize our cameraman uh, as another boat pusher through the worst rapids we've experienced thus far, uh, and the boat continues to take on water, which we're attempting to shuffle out as quickly as possible. Uh, we've got four miles to a campsite. Overall, I mean, what? 15, 20 miles to even where the takeout spot is. Oh yeah, is. definitely. Feeling I'm a little bit, uh, what's the word? Deflated, maybe a Deflated. little. Deflated. Mm, nope, nope, no, nope. wrong word. Too extreme. Wrong word for this boat. Uh, just feeling a little bit. So we're gonna try and continue on here. Uh, it's a little sketchy to use the motor. Um, primary concern now is getting to a place where we can, oh, look at oh, those ducks. ducks, look ducks. At those ducks, look at those ducks, look at those ducks, hold on, hold on, camera guy, camera guy, get yourself ready, get yourself ready, oh my god, oh my god, here we go, look at this one, look at this one right here. Yeah, that's insane. Got excited, probably scared ducks away. Also the bald eagle, what the heck? Yeah, that was pretty insane. Freaking bald eagle just came in out of nowhere and scared the ducks away. So, we were saying, we're kind of sinking, not sure. I mean, signs don't look great. 2.45 miles to the next, uh, well, 3.45 miles to the campsite. Do you mm -hmm. think we picked the right boat? Keep bailing. Those locals we passed earlier said they liked our they boat. Yeah, they sure liked it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really did. feel about the situation in the boat my line of thinking is if we go to that if we go to the campsite right not then we like we have to run the gamut to get out you know right what do you mean if for some reason there's something like super messed up with the boat that we discover at our campsite we have to go all the way out like right. another 10 miles if for some reason there's something wrong with the boat and it's something that we can repair, or if it's something that we can't repair, I'd much rather be by an ATV trail where we can 
round someone up. Very likely, maybe. Let's get out. it over there and evaluate that because if we have soaked sleeping bags, a 43 degree night isn't the night to mess around with that. Update, ran into some nice locals. Uh, after we beached this giant whale on what you could consider maybe a boat landing, gonna try and empty out the boat as quickly as possible. You can see the motor's already been taken off. Assess the damage and the wetness to our gear. Um, sleeping bags is a big one. When it gets down to that 40 degree and maybe even below range, you don't wanna be sleeping in a wet sleeping bag. That's actually to the point that it could be life-threatening quite literally. Um, so, things are being removed. We're seeing, oh, a lot of water in there. That was the thermocell. This is pretty crazy. Um, we do have a patch kit. I don't know if that's even up to the task. Yeah, see it coming in there? Look at it on the side. Where? It was in that, that corner. You can see, it, see it right there? Oh, wow. Oh my god, dude. Oh yes, my yes, god. Oh, we went out guns. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Oh my. That's the big one right there. I don't know if I have it. If you it's have gun tape, you're, you'd be okay. Like we we like do have a gorilla tape, tape, but I think gorilla tape. Like like I'm seeing too. I got metal right here. Yeah. See, it's just it's not easy here though, because the edge of the aluminum floor is right here. So it's just if a rock hits right there, it's right. it's not going to stretch. It's just going to cut here. It's pinched. <laughs> you know when a river runs through it when they take the boat down? Yes. That's us. That is. <laughs> and. For a day on the water, we had a pretty eventful day. Oh, this is great! <laughs> the guns were going on. The guns were blazing. Man. So where's your truck? Uh, can you load it up? up? There's your way out. That is our way out. <laughs> I think that's our way out. I think... We tried, right? We did. We tried, and right? Dude, we... I, I don't feel bad. It was a blast. Dude, it was incredible. Well, do you want, folks, Jim, do you want, this is where it all comes to an end. We got us a pop okay, draft here. We ran into some support, thankfully. Yeah, this is this is our support team. Uh, if you've ever seen like uh, a Baja race, they keep folks like this around. Yeah. That well, if we've done anything on this trip, we've drawn quite a crowd. If our cameraman can pan up to this area over there. That's because you just happened to stop at the local drinking hole. <laughs> Which was a great call on our end. <laughs> It's awesome because I am arched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got these geese here. We're gonna get them cleaned up. Um, a lot of meat on these geese. Heck of a lot more than uh, what you get on those ducks that we had this morning. So excited to get this, get these things into pieces and uh, into the frying pan. How's it going? Good yourself. Good. Had a little look today, huh? Yeah. Not bad. A couple yeah. geese. Man, you guys got quite the crew. Yeah, about 25 of them. Goose hunting. Yeah. Now you're a sturgeon. I thought maybe you were cleaning a sturgeon. This I've had was frying magic, 350 degrees. You dip them down as soon as they float, they're done. Yeah. And then when after you cook them with that, then you put some. Uh, Bari seasoning salt on them. Yeah, oh, yeah. A little garlic in there. Because you want them a little bit like big meat. You right. don't want them well done. They'll be terrible. Season them. Cool. Don't season them the more. Geese. Take yeah. the flavor geese. away. But, awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's what I know about geese. Come yeah. on, girls. Right. You'll see what a goose right. looks right. like. <laughs> Is that all you got then? Just yeah. the two? Well, there's our guy with the trailer. Oh. Should we, uh, We can go help him out. At 5:20. That's when happy hours over. Yep, they're peeling out. 
we are we are up north. <laughs> All right, update. If the site of this update looks a little familiar, it's actually because it is the same site that we launched from. Uh, we had to cut our adventure a little bit short due to some unexpected Swiss cheesing of the bottom portion of our boat. Now, just a little bit of work to make sure we um, get the meat out of these geese before we head on back. We do have a Yeti back here in the van that didn't make it into the boat that's full of ice. So we're gonna put these bad boys on ice. The last part of the journey is just to make it home, which seeing as how much difficulty we've had in just making it five miles down a river, and even getting back to this spot, we almost hit a deer on the way back here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, nothing is guaranteed at this point, but we're gonna cook up these geese when we get back. Hopefully they're as delicious as that wood duck was that we had this morning. And uh, all in all, still a dang good adventure. You know those things where they said to wrap it in bacon, take off the bacon, eat the bacon, throw away the goose? They lied. These are excellent. These are really, really, really I'm good. I have one. Hello, everybody. Hope you enjoy it. Where are we now? Hi, welcome. Trying to find where we are. Hello. Welcome to be here, everybody. We are now wrapping up the video. Uh, as you can see, we things didn't go according to plan. But we've already explained that. You've already seen it. Fact of the matter is, we had quite an adventure. Uh, we didn't have to go extremely far to do it. In fact, we were back by Monday to go to work. Uh, and we have some delicious snacks here. Mark, can you explain what these snacks are? All right, this is uh, like a goose popper-esque sort of thing. A uh, lot of components in here. You got a little piece of goose meat, water chestnut, jalapeno, a mm. little piece of pineapple. The nice thing, all wrapped in bacon, by the way, which makes anything delicious. Uh, the nice thing about it, all these things, you can really, they're canned. They all come from a can. You can have them on hand. You can keep them on hand. You want to make these. They're awesome for football games. They're awesome for stuff like this, handing out hors d'oeuvres. If, if a person is maybe a little shy of eating wild game, they are delicious, and they're fun at parties. Yeah. I, I could totally are. see doing like a buffalo kind of version of this with some cream cheese, bacon, mm -hmm. you know, cheddar cheese, and so, some Frank's red hot sauce and stuff. I've made them with, you know, deer meat, this, that, the other. Oh, forgot. Also, a uh, drizzle of honey over the top really? before you cook them. Yeah. Really? Kind of lets it caramelize, crisp up a little bit. Yep. These are really, really tasty. Yeah. And these were made on the uh, little smoky? The little smoky. Little smoky. Little smoky. Charcoal grill. Okay. It works. So, guys, real big thing it's got to come down to is... Would we do this again? No. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, yes. I this thought we were all exact, saying no. No, the exact way we did it. <laughs> I thought we were talking about our real feelings. Yeah. <laughs> the exact way we did it? No. No. A different way? Yes. yes. Okay. So the idea of a river hunt is certainly not dead in our minds. Clearly, we just didn't have the know-how, and uh, we've learned a ton. So, guys, I think... I think in the future we gotta take another stab at doing a boat oriented hunt, mm -hmm. maybe a different location, probably a different boat. Yep. Um, probably. You know, not even that it has to fault. be a different There's, boat. It the other just, boat, it doesn't or it just make... has to be an appropriate boat for the body of water because that would have been an appropriate boat. Oh, for the original hunt, yes. For the mm -hmm. original spot that we went to that Eric wouldn't let us go to, yep. a lake, a bigger Stand body of water, something like that. So. It, I tell you what, you know what we needed? You know what we honestly needed? A foot of water. We didn't have a foot of water a lot of times. No. Yeah. So, on that note, you know, it really comes down to understanding where you're going to be hunting, the actual location, the geography, and all those things, and as much scouting as you can possibly do. If anything, this whole thing was sort of a, uh, a lesson in the importance of scouting. We mm -hmm. scouted only a tiny bit. We were flying by the seat of our pants. Yes. And so, in the future, I'd say we're going to do far more of that and just understanding that things can happen. Also, coming up with a contingency plan, too. Mm -hmm. There was probably a way we could have kept hunting, but... Well, and also, when you're talking about a river, you're only going to have very limited access points to be able to look at that river, right? right. You're just not going to be able to see the whole thing. Sometimes getting on it, that's the only way to see it. We did aerial scout it a lot. It a did lot. look like there were some shallow runs. We thought we'd be able to get through them a little bit easier than we did. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just what happened. And we learned a lot of lessons, and it was still a blast. We were able to knock a few things down, got the duck in the morning, I guess. I keep thinking, it seems like we were there a lot longer than we were, actually. Yeah. And then the geese that we were going to eat that night. Yep. But now we're eating them now. Yeah. 
If you've made it this far in the video, congratulations through all of our rambling. Yeah. And um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next pod venture. And rest in peace, boat. <laughs>